I want to show you how you can use pro forma financial statements to forecast the external financing needs for a company in the future. So I've got a pretty simple example here, but why are we doing this? Well, think about it. As a company grows, its need for assets is also going to grow, and you're going to have to finance those assets. For example, think about Amazon when Jeff Bezos started the company. It was a very small company. It was simply selling books. That was the only product. The you know, warehouse they had may have been very small. Many of the books may have been drop shipped directly from the um, publisher. And you know, maybe they had a small warehouse somewhere. The headquarters may have been Bezos' garage. So Oftentimes, it's very small when you get started. Now, Amazon is a behemoth. They have warehouses all across the country. Probably many of you have Amazon warehouses near your home or near your office. The world headquarters is, you know, very large. In fact, they were planning on building a second headquarters simply because they just have so many people working for the company. They no longer are just selling books online. They sell lots of stuff online. They have their um, Amazon Web Services business. So they need a lot more resources because they need more assets. They need more warehouses, more office space. So how are we going to do this? Well, we use a pro forma income statement. Let me just scroll down here, and then I'll come back and tell you how I built this here. And you have an income statement, right? You have net sales minus cost of goods sold, gives us gross profit, okay? Subtract out general selling and administrative expenses, subtract out interest expense, earnings before uh, taxes, taxes, um, subtract taxes, you get earnings after taxes, then you get the dividend paid, and you get any additions to retained earnings. So after you do that, you can work through the balance sheet and figure out um, what the external financing need is. How is that done? Well, when you do the balance sheet, everybody's taken accounting. The first thing you learn is that there is this identity. The total assets has to equal total liabilities plus total equity. Now, when you work through this model, what you're going to find is that it doesn't balance. That total assets doesn't equal total liabilities plus total equity. So you need to force it to fit. We sometimes refer to that as a plug, but what that plug is, it's the external financing needs. So let's go back and talk about how we'll actually do this. We need to make some assumptions. We need to know for example, what are sales going to be in 2025? So we have actual sales right now in 2024 of 22,000. We're going to assume that the growth rate is 20%. That the percentage of net sales, uh, cost of goods sold as a percentage of net sales is 82%. How do you find these things? How do you estimate these? You can look at historical financial statements. If you look at a company's historical financial st statement, you'll find that cost of goods sold is usually a pretty constant percentage of net sales, perhaps 82, 83, or 84 percent. Now, you know, it depends on the company. It's not always going to be 80 percent. A software company may have a very low cost of goods sold as a percentage of net sales, but may have much higher general selling and administrative expenses. You're going to make some assumptions about long-term debt. You may start with, with what it actually is and you may assume that, look, we're not going to change any of that. Once we figure out the external financing needs, then we'll have to decide whether that should be from issuing stock or issuing more debt. Um, we'll make some assumption about what the interest rate paid on the debt is, what the corporate tax rate is, 
dividends divided by earnings after taxes is what we call the payout ratio. Okay? It's the percentage of earnings that are paid out to dividends. So if it's 50% and the company has $100 in after tax earnings, they'll pay $50 in dividends and the other 50 will go to retained earnings. We make some other assumptions. Um, we have a current assets to net sales percentage. Right? If you have more sales, you're probably going to need more current assets to support it. Um, we have net fixed assets. That's going to be just a fixed number. And we have current liabilities to net sales. Again, if you're going to have more sales, you're likely going to have more um, need more current liabilities. And then some starting point for owner's equity. So these are the assumptions we have. And once we've built the model, we can get it to, we can go and change some of these numbers to see how it affects external financing. So I would encourage you, if you want to build this model, is to do exactly what I have, use exactly the same numbers I've used, put them in exactly the same cells, and make sure you get the same result. Once you know it works, then you can change the numbers and see how things are um, affected. But this is a way to know that your, your, um, your spreadsheet is working. This is how I did it. I took this from um, a textbook example. I put the numbers in. I put exactly the same numbers in exactly the same cells that were put in in the textbook example. And then after I got it to work, I'm able to go back and change some of those numbers and to create my own um, assumptions and my own model. So let's go down to the income statement. So this looks like your standard income statement, a fairly simple one. Net sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit. Um, if we subtract out general selling and administrative expenses, and we subtract out interest expense, we get earnings before taxes. If we subtract out taxes, we get earnings after taxes. Okay, once we have the earnings, we're gonna figure out how much is paid in the form of dividends, and the rest is going to be added to retained earnings. Okay, right here I have the actual equation that you type in, and that's what I typed in here. So let's just take a look here. B3 plus B3 times D4. So if we go back up here, you want to reference the cells. You don't want to type numbers in. You want to reference the cells so we can change the assumptions and see what happens. B3 is the original sales, and we said it's B3 plus B3 times D4. So B3 times D4 is going to be the, the amount that sales grow, and so the new growth, uh, or the new sales, in 2025 will be 26,400. Cost of goods sold, we said, is going to be some percentage of, of net sales. Here we have it at 82%, so this is in cell D5, and D5 times D19, which is net sales. So you're taking 82% of this, and you're getting this value here. All right. We're Gross profit is just going to be net sales minus cost of goods sold. And again, you can you know punch these into your calculator and see that you get the same numbers. Okay, general uh, selling and administrative expenses again a percentage of net sales. D6. Just scroll up here. This is this percentage in D6 times net sales, and you work through this and each one has some assumptions here. The one thing that you have to keep in mind here is the one tricky part is that you can't really know the interest expense until you know how much um, debt you have and you may have external financing. So when you do the calculation, if you just put these formulas in, you're going to get like these little arrows saying this is a, a circular relationship, right? That this 
this uh, is determined by this, but is also determines that. And so that means that it can't really solve it. To deal with that, you'll want to go to File, Options, and here you're going to say Formulas. And what you want to make sure that you have here is that this is clicked on Enable Iterative Calculation. That is, it's going to keep guessing back and forth until it solves both of these at the same time. All right, so you're putting in these formulas. And again, put these formulas. I have a blank column in C here. So you want to put everything in the same columns I do, uh, in the same cells, and these same formulas. And you can see that once you figure out earnings after taxes, we said here that the dividend divided by earnings after taxes, that's the payout ratio, is 50%. So half of this 630 will be in the form of dividends paid. The other half will go to retained earnings. The balance sheet is exactly the same thing. We go to these formulas. Current assets, we said, are going to be a percentage of sales. So D12 up here is the percentage times sales right here. And we do that in the fixed assets is just a fixed number and we get total assets and then we can do the same thing with these formulas for um, current liabilities, long-term debt, owner's equity, and total liabilities and owner's equity. What's the external financing need? Well, this number is supposed to equal this number. It doesn't. So we're going to have this shortfall over here in total liabilities and owner's equity of 1403. So that's this D33 total assets minus D38, which is total liabilities and owner's equity. So we're going to need to raise $1,403. Okay, how do we raise it? Well, we could raise it using long-term debt, or we could raise it using um, equity. Um, I imagine we could raise uh, current liabilities as well, but normally it's going to be debt or equity. Now, What's the beauty of this once you get this to work? Once you get this to work, we can change the numbers. Okay, what if the company's growing at a, let's say, faster rate, say 22%? All right, you don't see anything change here. These are just the assumptions. But when we scroll down here, we're going to see that they need more external um, funding. Okay, faster it grows, the more you need. Let's say 30%. Okay, need quite a bit more external funding. So building a pro forma uh, income statement and balance sheet is a really great way to be able to figure out what the external funding required for a company is. Right? I mean, you just can't grow at the fastest pace you want, right? We all think about growth and we all talk about we want to grow, we want to grow quick, quickly, we want to grow our business. But maybe you've seen that commercial. I remember it was a few years ago. I'm not sure who it was. It might have been IBM or something. But it showed this company. They built an online website. And as soon as they launched it, they had one sale. And then they had two, and everybody's exciting. And then they had three, four. All of a sudden, sales are growing so quickly. They see it, see it flashing on their screen. Now they're terrified. Will they be able to handle all of this? Well, if you're going to sell a lot more, you're going to need a lot more warehouse space. You're going to need more working capital, right, to have an inventory of, of goods. So there's a lot of other stuff that goes into growing. And if you grow too quickly, you may need a lot of external funding. If it's the case that you're growing um, you know, too quickly and you can't raise the external funding, what you might want to do 
is slow down your growth, right? If you have, you know, customers, you own a restaurant and you have too many customers, you know, too many people who want to eat in your, your restaurant, one thing you can do is, for, for example, raise price so you can reduce the number of people who are coming in. So, you know, you only have so many tables and if you're going to, you know, serve all of those people, you're going to have to add tables or you're going to have to open a second location. So this is a way to model how much external financing that you'll need. So just to recap, what you do is you have to start with some assumptions and you can get many of these assumptions by looking at historical financial statements from your company. See if some of these ratios or some of these percentages are relatively constant, then you can use them. Then you build a pro forma income statement. And again, you can use these formulas here. And a balance sheet, right? And once you've done that, you can see here owner's equity, so to tie the balance sheet and the income statement together, it's B15, so B15 is owner's equity, plus D38, what is D, um, I'm sorry, plus D28, D28 is the amount added to retained earnings. So this is the original owner's equity plus any retained earnings that's added. And then the external financing is going to be total assets minus total liabilities and owner's equity. And if you have a shortfall, this is positive. If you have too much, you may not need as much external financing. If we were growing at a much slower rate, well, let's say we're growing at 0%. Let's see what we get. We need very little. Let's say if we're, we're actually growing at a slow rate. So let's say minus 2%. Well, let me make that bigger. Make it minus 10%. Nope, still need some external financing. All right, but if you're growing too slowly, okay, or you're actually, um, getting smaller as a business, it may be the case that you have too much external financing. That is, that you actually want, uh, you want to reduce your external financing, right? So you want to pay off some of your debt or retire some of your stock. So I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.